Here in Scotland, the fishing industry's kind of been in decline for years, but Stonehaven is still very much a working harbour with fishing boats of all different sizes. There's also plenty of private boats here as well, but for someone like me who doesn't have access to a boat, it's always been really difficult to get out and explore the magnificent coastline here. Until now. I must admit that I was pretty excited about this boat trip. Not just because it was on a rib either, but more that I'd never really had the chance to get out and see the Stonehaven coastline from another perspective. Okay, folks, everyone ready? Okay, this trip isn't cheap at 40 quid, but for two hours in the water, I think that's a pretty fair deal. Our first leg was a blast over Stonehaven Bay, and at this speed we were almost in muckles before we turned round. Up here we had a look at some rock formations and stacks used by climbers, and then it was back down to Skatey Shore which sits just below Stonehaven Golf Course. These metamorphic rocks form the fault line that separates the highlands and the lowlands of Scotland. Now this line runs from here in the northeast right through to Helensburgh just outside Glasgow. And if you have a look at Google Maps, you'll be able to see it for yourself, cutting the country in half. We then swept past Stonehaven again, heading south where most of this tour would take place. Now, as I say, it was such a treat to see a town I know so well from this angle, and what a day for it too. Just south of Stonehaven, we passed a very recognisable Downey Point, which is a tricky place to get to, before we continued on past the War Memorial sitting high above us. This would then lead us on to Denotter Castle, one of Scotland's most stunning ruins. Remember, I'm just giving you a quick look at the coast in this video, but if you do the sea safari for yourself, you'll stop at all of these spots along the way and the guys will give you a really good running commentary as well. There's also plenty chance to see lots of puffins and guillemots and seals, and maybe, if you're luckier than us, some dolphins too. I must admit, I prefer the view of Denotter Castle from the shore. I think it's more dramatic, but this was still really cool to see it from the water. But even more impressive than the man-made castle were the shapes of the rocks down here formed by nature over thousands of years. And I'd say 99% of these places are only accessible by boat. So this bit that we're heading into, um, it's known as the pulpit. It certainly took someone who knows what he's doing to guide us into the pulpit a narrow entrance to another isolated pocket of shoreline under the dramatic cliffs. I'd love to come and explore here in the kayak, but it felt so much safer with someone who actually knew what they were doing. It's quite an isolated place, you wouldn't want to get into bother here. And well done to Andy for managing to reverse us all the way back out again as well. The further south we pushed, the more seabirds we encountered, and most seemed pretty relaxed having us around. This is such a perfect spot for them to set up home. The coastline here is seriously like few places I've seen before, and on a day like today, it felt more like the Galapagos Islands or somewhere more than the northeast of Scotland. What they would do is they would smuggle the 
Next up was Wine Cove, another stunning bay with a colourful history of smugglers sneaking alcohol ashore without paying the taxes. These days it's more popular as a safe place for seals to bring up their pups. It wasn't long before we were arriving at Fylsheuch, a famous stretch of coastline up here with hundreds of thousands of seabirds at this time of year. We saw a lot of puffins here today, but I only had the GoPro so they were a bit too far away for that. But the nosy seals, they got a bit closer to the boat. The cliffs at Fylsheuch get a lot more sheer and dramatic. It's easy to see why the birds feel safe to breed here. Every inch of rock at this time of year is covered with birds sitting shoulder to shoulder. And there's quite a few of them bobbing about in the sea as well. Although there are fewer nooks and crannies here than further up the coast, this is probably my favourite part of the trip. Just the scale of the place is incredible. You might be able to recognise the bird watching hut high up on the cliff top from one of my previous videos. One of the things I really loved about the sea safari was that even though we were in a fast rib, it wasn't all about speed and we were given plenty of time to take in these stunning stretches of coastline, on the way south anyway, before a more exhilarating ride back up north still to come. Still had a couple of pretty cool places to see though, and here we have the Crotton Waterfall, also known as the Norseman Spout I believe. And we couldn't have had a better day to see it as the sun and water combined to produce a beautiful rainbow over our bow. That was us about as far south as we'd be going today, so just a chance for a quick peek at the secret beach, accessible only through this hole in the rock. This is quite near to Catterline Harbour, so it's definitely on the list for a future visit on the kayak. Just off in the distance there you can see Todd Head Lighthouse, and this was our turning point before heading back up to Stonehaven after an awesome tour on the sea safari. It felt great to get up some speed for the return journey, but this is something only to be done if you know this coast well. It's absolutely littered with outcrops of rock in the least expected places. Even at this speed, the rib feels completely safe and comfortable, and it really is a beast with two 300 horsepower outboards on the back. It was great to flash past the Notter Castle again, and Andy cranked things up with a couple of tight turns before we headed back inside the breakwater at Stonehaven Harbour. Stonehaven is a popular spot on sailing voyages and you'll see a couple of proper ocean ready yachts tied up at the breakwater. The first one, Good Dog, was changing crew on a round Britain trip.
Amazing. Cheers, mate. Thank you. That was incredible. Thanks very much, mate. Well, guys, what can I say? That was absolutely fantastic. If you're ever in Stonehaven and you get the chance to do the sea safari, I couldn't recommend it more. It's worth every single penny. What a day we had for it as well. And Andy and Jake just gave us such a cool tour around Stonehaven. I used to live in Stonehaven and I've never seen it from that perspective before. So if you get the chance, get yourself up here and do that. It was something else. So it's goodbye from Stonehaven Harbour. Thank you so much for watching today, guys, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.